Glory to God. Welcome back to the channel. I'm so glad to be here with you tonight. Um, we had such a wonderful time in worship tonight. I just did not want it to end. But here we are. God bless you and welcome back. Turn with me, if you would, in your Bibles to Joshua chapter 7, starting in the first verse. Joshua chapter 7, verse 1. Say amen when you get there. Well, while you're going, I'm going to give you a little bit of background. Children of Israel have just crossed over Jordan and taken the city of Jericho. Now they're basing out of Jericho and they're moving forward and they're going to be going up to the city of Ai. Verse 7, I mean, excuse me, verse 1, chapter 7. Are you there? Amen. All right. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside beth -Haven, on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand of men go up and smite Ai. And make not all the people to labor thither, for they are but few. So there went up thither of the people about three thousand men, and they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai smote of them about thirty and six men. For they chased them from before the gate, even unto Shebarim, and smote them in going down, wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. And Joshua rent his clothes, and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord, until eventide, he and the elders of Israel, and put dust upon their heads." Father God, we come before you in the name of Jesus, Lord. I humble myself before you, Lord God. Holy Spirit, I depend upon you. I cannot do this without you, Lord. Breathe life upon this word, Lord. Let me speak your words and your words alone, Father. And Holy Spirit, touch the hearts of everyone watching and listening. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, what we're talking about tonight, I didn't give you the title of my message. The title of my message tonight is When God Departs. When God, when God calls you to a higher level, He expects more of you. Amen? Amen. Things that were acceptable mm -hmm. at one time in your walk with God no longer are acceptable. Mm -hmm. The things that you did just a few months ago. You can't be doing them anymore. When God lifts you up and elevates you, you got to realize that people are looking at you and things that you do matter. Amen. Amen? Amen. And, you know, God said that His Spirit would not always strive with men. Mm -hmm. Okay? There's a time when that grace will run out on you. And sometimes God will walk away and you don't even know he's gone. Now, I want to be clear on something. Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the earth. But I'm talking about when God lifts his presence off of you. Okay? Yes, he's still with you. But you're not abiding in, you know, Psalm 91 he that dwelleth in the secret place to the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Okay, well, if you're not dwelling in that secret place, amen? Amen. Okay, why does God's Spirit depart? Hmm. Number one, because of sin. Achan took spoil of the city. He took a garment, some silver and some gold. Okay, and it caused the death of 36 men because of his greed. 
You can read about that, what he took in verse 21. And you know, we can get so used to sinning that it seems insignificant. We don't even realize that God is no longer fighting for us. You know, I think as Samson, when I say that, in Judges 16.20, Samson, he's doing the same thing over and over and over again. You know what? This is what I can't understand about Samson. You read these stories, and, you know, there's a clear pattern here. Delilah asks him, where does your great strength lie? And he says, oh, well, if you bind me with, you know, new ropes that have never been, you know, then I'll be weak as any other man. Samson, the Philistines be upon thee. And Samson gets up and he rips them like they were flax, okay? Mm -hmm. But she does this to him several times. Why would he think when he tells her the truth it would be any different? <laughs> you know, we can be so dumb sometimes you know we see the enemy coming to us and tempting us in this thing tempting us in this thing and we get victory we get victory we get victory and then all of a sudden we just take the bait and we already know that it's a setup but yet we walk right into it Judges 16.20, it says, And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. I'm going to do this thing that I keep doing. And I'm going to get away with it again. Mm. <laughs> no, you ain't. There's going to come a time. You know, the Bible says, seek the Lord while he may be found. God says that he would laugh at our calamity. You know, you'll call me, you'll seek me early, but I'm not going to hear you. Mm -hmm. Get it right now. And I'm going to tell you something, folks. Those of you that are not saved, I'm going to urge you to give your life to Christ now. Those of you that may be backslidden, get it right now while you have a time. Bible says, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Do it now while you can. I saw a bumper sticker I remember one time that said, Give your heart to Jesus today so the preacher doesn't have to lie at your funeral. <laughs> I mean, my goodness, every funeral I've ever been to in my life, the person was just a saint of God. And I mean, and I've known some of these people and known that it wasn't true. You're going to make a man of God stand there and tell lies about you to make people feel good? I'm sorry, but there is a heaven to choose and a hell to shun. Okay? And not everybody is going to go make it into those pearly gates. The Bible says that broad is the way that leadeth unto destruction. And many there be that go thereat. But narrow is the way that leads unto life. And few there be that find it. So get it right now. Stop the sin. Stop the playing. Walk with God. Hold His hand. And stay close to him. Amen? Amen. Number two. Because we become lukewarm. Mm, lukewarm. lukewarm. Revelation 3.15. Jesus says, I know thy works, that thou art neither hot nor cold. I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. And that word spew means to vomit. You know, and when I, when I read that hot or cold, I'm automatically drawn to think of coffee. 
I, I, I love coffee, I just can't drink it anymore. I love iced coffee and I love hot coffee. And I so wish I could drink some, but it does not agree with my body any longer. But coffee, hot coffee, is nothing like it to wake you up in the morning. In the middle of the afternoon, a good iced coffee, wonderful. But you got a set of, uh, you got a cup of coffee sitting there. It's been sitting there, and you're thinking it's still cold. I mean, excuse me, you're thinking it's still hot. And you take and you get a drink of that and manage to swallow it down, it will give you a gag reflex and just about make you vomit. Mm. And that's the way as Christians, we need to be hot or cold. Let's be hot. Let's be on fire for God. Let's not be lukewarm because it's a big turnoff for God Almighty. We need to draw close to God and stay close to God. Um... Number three, not living up to just the basic Christian standard. God will depart. God's spirit will depart. Ephesians 5, 3. This is talking about the Christian life. He says, but fornication and all uncleanness and covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become a saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talk, that should say foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Fornication in the church of God. My goodness. I'm going to step on some toes right now. Young men, young women in the church. You need to keep yourselves pure. Just because everybody else is living in sin in the world doesn't make it okay. Will God forgive it? Yes, God will forgive it. But keep yourselves. I am happy to say that my wife and I, we kept ourselves from each other till we were married. And I can say that, and I'm going to tell you what, that makes that bond so much greater when you've taken and waited to be together. I'm going to tell you something else about this. When you go and you start laying with everybody, you know that you're opening yourself up, not just to possibility of STDs as in sexually transmitted diseases, but you are opening yourself up to what I call STDs, spiritually transmitted demons. You know that there's a saying that they teach children now, when you sleep with someone, you have slept with their entire sexual history. Okay, now I want you to think about something. The Apostle Paul, he said, Will you take the members of Christ and make them members of an harlot? What? Know ye not that he which is joined with an harlot is one with an harlot? For two, he saith, shall be one flesh. So when you join yourselves with someone sexually, you are creating an ungodly sexual soul tie. And you are opening yourself up to every demonic influence that that person has ever had. And you think about people that go out and pick up a prostitute off a street that has slept with hundreds of people. My God. My God. Now God can forgive and God can drive those spirits out. But don't open yourself up to it in the first place. Fornication among saints. Adultery among saints. And homosexuality among saints. This should not be taking place. But it is. It is rampant in the church today. Folks, you need to get on your knees and repent. And you need to stop it. Using your cell phones and your computers in the middle of the night to look up pornography. Mm-mm-mm-mm. 
We need to flee those things. You think you're going to actually be sleeping with people and have God's anointing manifesting through you? You think you're going to be looking at that pornography at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning and God's going to move through you? Come on, folks. Let's wake up. Amen? Amen. Number four. God's Spirit will depart when we quench the Spirit. Okay. Thessalonians 5.19 says, Quench not the Spirit. How do we quench the Spirit? I'm going to tell one on myself. I was really, really close to God this one time. And God was doing a lot of good things with me and through me and in me and I mean I, I was really really feeling good about myself you know God was using me and I was with some uh, people and someone asked a question and I saw an opportunity for a quick little joke and I made that joke and this person called me out on it and my heart sank. I was like somebody dumped a bucket of ice water on me. I had quenched the spirit. Mm. And it tore me up. But I immediately repented for it. Now, let's talk about quenching. Um... Okay, okay, good. That was everything I wanted to cover. Let's talk about quenching for a minute. Quenching means to extinguish. You know, you get a big fire built up. And you're warming yourself by that fire. That one little off-color joke that I told. Poof! Water went on that fire and just extinguished the whole thing. And, you know, when it's cold outside... And you're not next to a fire, you like that, you notice it. But let's talk about another kind of quenching. There's a show that um, I haven't watched in a while now, but I used to watch it every Friday, religiously. It was called Forged in Fire, or it still is called Forged in Fire. But um, one of the steps in making these blades that these guys do is called quenching. They get this blade cherry red and they dunk it in oil and cool it down rapidly. Now what that does to the blade is it strengthens the blade and it hardens the steel. So when you are quenching the spirit at that same time, if you're not careful, you are hardening your heart. Amen? Amen. So you got to, if you know that you've done it, be quick to repent for it. Quick to cry out to God. Because if you don't, if you let that rapid quenching take place, it hardens your heart. And the next time you tell that off-color joke, you're not going to feel as bad about it. You know, the Bible talks about having their consciences seared with a hot iron. You know, there are people that can take almost boiling hot water and I mean boiling hot coffee and and drink it and it doesn't bother them because they are used to it they've built up a tolerance to it we don't want to build up a tolerance to quenching the spirit of God because then how can we ever hear his voice amen, amen. number four that was the last one so what can I do number one repent amen, amen. repent Revelation 2.5 says, Remember from whence thou art fallen, and repent and do the first works. So remember where you were, and repent and do the first works. First works, I did a message about that a while back. The first works. What did it take you to get where you were? Start over. If you fall off a mountain and you want to get back up to the top, you got to start climbing back up that mountain. Wherever you fell to, climb back up to where you were. And you know, 
we do, we fall, we fall every day. Little falls, you know, we trip along the way, we stumble. We might veer off into the woods or whatever. Get back on that path. And when I pray, I pray, God, don't take me to where I've been before. Don't take me to where I've ever been. But take me to where I've never been. I don't want to go back to the level I was at. I want to go above it. Amen? I want to go higher. Let's keep going up. If we fall, let's get back up again. You know, when, when somebody falls off a horse, the first thing they need to do is get right back up on it. Or they'll begin to be afraid to ride again. Just get back up. That's the wonderful thing about God. Is He is ever merciful. His mercies are renewed day by day. So get it right. Just pick yourself back up. The Bible says a righteous man falleth seven times and getteth up. Amen? Amen. Number two, confess our sins. And we are we, we need to confess our sins. You know, um, there's a prayer. Father, I haven't cheated anyone today. I haven't told any lies. I haven't lusted. I haven't coveted anything, but now I'm getting ready to get out of bed. <laughs> so, you know, we, we go through a fallen world. We're going to miss the mark. So we need to confess to God our sins. Revel, uh, excuse me. First John 1 John 1.9, he says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Just tell them, Lord, I missed it. Forgive me. Wash me clean and make me new. Amen? Amen. Number three. Ask, guard, <laughs> ask God to put a guard by your mouth. Amen? Amen. Um, Psalm 39, 1. It says, um, and this is King David. And he said, I said I will take heed to my words. That I am not with, excuse me, that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. So we need to bridle our tongue, as they say. You can go read the book of James and see what James has to say about the tongue. That little bee thing right there. <laughs> oh my goodness. That thing starts a lot of trouble. That tongue will dig a hole so deep for you, you couldn't get out of it. Okay? So we need to be careful. Proverbs says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Okay? So let's be careful what comes out of our mouth. Take and check yourself. Before you say something, am I speaking life to this thing? Or am I speaking death to it? You know... When we talk to our children, don't tell your children they're stupid for the love of God, please. Tell them, I know you're smarter than this. If they're misbehaving, don't tell them they're bad. Tell them, I know you're better than this. You're smarter than this. You're better than this. Let's find creative ways to correct children. Without speaking a curse over them. Amen. To make them feel stupid. You know children. Children. They think they're stupid. So many of them do. I remember this young man coming up to me. In the youth group. When I was in the Nazarene church. And he looked at me. And he said. John. Do you think I'm retarded? <laughs> and I said yes. <laughs> no. This is a 14-year-old kid. Now, why do you think this kid thought he was retarded? Probably because he had a parent that, or a brother or a sister that was constantly saying negative things to him. You know, young people, it is so hard for them to deal with life as it is when you tell them things like they're stupid or you're retarded, 
you know those words they say uh, sticks and stones may break my bones but words may never hurt you well that's the biggest lie that has ever been told ready aim fire you were just killed by words words matter and once they've been spoken they cannot be taken back folks they go on and one day Jesus said we will be held accountable for every idle word that we speak so let's be careful especially with children you know Jesus had a lot to say about children he said that somebody that offends one of these little ones that believe in me it would be better if a millstone were hanged about their neck and they were cast into the sea now I know what you're thinking when you think of a millstone you're probably thinking about something about this big around no a millstone is probably about this thick my hope oh, yeah about this thick okay and probably about 25 to 30 feet in diameter now that's a serious thing to say to have that tied around your neck and thrown into the sea amen and number four and i'm closing with this spend time with god spend time in his presence and i alluded to this earlier psalm 91 1 he says he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty let the word oh i'm sorry this is psalm 1914 i'm jumping around here psalm 1914 he says let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight O lord my strength my redeemer so spend time with god god says in his word draw near unto god and he will draw near unto you that's all i have for you tonight folks um listen if you're new to the channel subscribe please give us a thumbs up on the video and share it with your friends god bless you we love you and we'll see you next week hallelujah amen, amen.